Hi, active growers. It's Chris. Today we're going to talk about planting the Octopot Grow System. For information on our products or to purchase an Octopot Grow System, visit octopot.com. These instructions work for both the three and this, the six gallon grow system. First, prepare your soil. Moist soil is easier to handle, so add water to your soil before starting. It also helps prevent you from breathing in the dust. Check the label to see if your soil is already charged with fertilizer. If not, add enough fertilizer to the soil to help get the plant started. Your soil should look like this. 40% perlite to 60% high quality potting soil. If necessary, add more perlite to bring your soil near this ratio. Now I'm going to be putting several scoops into the grow sleeve to fill the cup portion of the hydro wick. Let's see if I can do it cross-armed. Oh, I did! Yes! I'm going to add a few scoops here just to fill the bottom and then I'm going to pack it in firmly. Some particles may fall through into the hydro reservoir but that won't affect your plant so don't worry about it. I'm going to pack it and kind of pull up on the edges of the sleeve as I go. I'm going to add more soil and continue to pack firmly, especially around the sides of the grow sleeve. You want to fill the grow sleeve all the way to the top, packing as you go. Now the grow sleeve can be adjusted by rolling it down an inch or two. But the only reason to do this is if you have, have a plant that needs a very wet environment. So don't be cheap on the soil and only fill the grow sleeve part way. It'll be reverse economics. Again, just a little tugs here and there, straightens it out. I use my hand to kind of push around and especially again, go around the sides. You really don't want this to uh, be loosely packed because it'll slouch. It'll look bad and your plant will tend to, to weave one way or another. I want to shout out to my old buddy Dave. Thanks for the ice uh, scoop. It's worked for like 30 some years packing soil. And except for a little wear and tear, still doing good. Almost done. Be careful, putting your plant too close to the hydro reservoir can drown it. So fill your grow sleeve almost to the top. A couple more scoops and I'm there. All right, I'm getting, getting there. So next we're going to plant your seed, your clone, or your plant start. I love using the little 14 ounce party cups for my plant starter. Uh, I just cut some little holes in the bottom so it's got a drain. It makes a nice sized plant, beautiful one transplant and, uh, and it's in its final resting place, growing place I should say. So I got the plant stuck in there. I'm going to just kind of backfill around the top. Again, I'm pressing into the soil, pressing the soil down as I go so it's nice and firm, well packed. Beautiful, huh? So now I'm going to uh, just have this one plant in the Octopot grow system. Normally you only have one because the plant will grow so big. So next step, watering over the top. I'm only going to do this once and it's really to just remove the air pockets. This will settle the plant into the soil and start the capillary action. This is the only time you water your octopot over the top. Don't worry that your young plant isn't getting enough water. It is being naturally fed by capillary action. Now, capillary action is the process of moving water and nutrients upward between the soil particles. The next thing you do, fill your hydro reservoir about halfway with water. You want to run about half full for your early stages of growth. Oops, I'm going to get my trusty little funnel here. In we go. The depth gauge 
is a wonderful little device. It'll tell you at a glance how much water is in the system. And again, some people will get nervous that water and nutrients won't reach their seedling or young plant. Don't worry. Octopods create a moisture gradient throughout the growth sleeve. The bottom of the growth sleeve, and the soil in the bottom of the growth sleeve, is very moist. In the center, it's less moist, and the top can feel actually dry to the touch. That is how it should be. Plants sense water and naturally grow in the direction of the water. And that's why it's so important to use the correct aerated and well-draining soil in your octopod. Using the wrong soil can actually prevent water from reaching your plant. We don't recommend watering over the top of the soil after your initial planting because plants will sense water at the top and that is where they will keep their roots. The goal is to allow your plant to develop its secondary root system in the hydro reservoir. Watering over the top will prevent this and result in a weaker root system and a smaller plant. So don't do it. Another advantage to octopots moisture gradient is that the top of the soil stays drier. It wards off fungus gnats who need a wet environment to lay their eggs. The next thing we do is add fertilizer to the hydro reservoir. You can use conventional or organic water soluble fertilizers. You may have to cut back on your fertilizer amounts in the octopot growth system because it is a bottom feed system. Adding too much fertilizer to your hydro reservoir can cause root burn. Now one thing that you want to do is after you put your fertilizer in, wash it back with enough water to kind of mix it in thoroughly. Unlike other containers, water, fertilizer, and nutrients are not wasted from washing out the bottom. So you use less. You can monitor your nutrient solution too. Uh, nutrient meters are easy to use with octopots and they measure and they help you measure and control your plant feeding systems. You'll have to learn about it, but you just push it in here, watch your readings and adjust accordingly. Well, that's how you plant and begin growing in your octopot growth system. If you have any further questions, please check out our website, octopot.com, octopot.com, or call us directly. Thank you very much and grow in peace.